Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town, another edition where we're finding reasons for you to be happy living in Central Florida. I mean, how can you not be happy living in the great Orlando area where uh, the joy of the world is all about? And we are just delighted that you're here today. We've got a, th this program focuses on different issues that we face not only as human beings, but as followers of Jesus. And we need to never be afraid to address all kinds of issues. And today, we want to talk about health. Now, I don't know if you see yourself as a healthy person or not, but we've got a man with us today, a man that has been trained in medicine that's going to talk to us about health issues. And it is a, a delight to welcome you, Dr. Gordon Crozier, delighted to have you today. Thank you. Thank you for here. joining us. Well, you're a man that's familiar with television because you've got your own program. You are a board certified physician here in Orlando. Yes. What is your specialty? Well, my specialty now is really treating according to genetics. Uh, previously, I worked at uh, the university and I was clinical faculty and I worked in women's health primarily back then. But now I treat men as well as women. So you, you delivered babies. Yes. That's it. And so now you're working, your practice focuses on the, this whole idea of just wellness and keeping people healthy. Is that correct? Wellness and then uh, mycotoxicosis, which is mold toxicity, is a big part of it. Okay. You, you talked about genetics. So let's, before we jump in, because I, there are several issues that we need to go in. Um, first of all, we realize that God made a very complicated machine when he made the human body. Yes, he did. But in that process, being being responsible to the scriptures and, and genetics. Uh, can you, what makes genetics so important when we think about human health? Well, when you think about genetics, you know, even in Leviticus, the Lord was telling the people to, if they had mold in their house or on their garments, to cut it out and remove it. If it came back, the whole item was to be destroyed if it was your home. Every timber and stone was to be taken to, to a place of defilement. So it was outside of the city. Why did the Lord know that? Or why did the Lord do that? Well, the Lord did that because he knew his people had a genetic glitch where they could not remove those mycotoxins from their body. So genes are extremely important to knowing how we should live and how we can keep our temple, the temple the Lord gave us, healthy and clean. Well, you're right. Our, the Bible says that our bodies are the temple of God. So it's a reason for people. The, as a physician, I'm sure you're, you're treating people who have issues. But the whole idea of being screened and, and looking at our lives before these issues come, what makes it so hard for Americans to take good care of their body? Um, I think part of it is laziness. And we live in an instant society. So we want to drive through fast food and eat fast food, which is not healthy for us. And we want to get cured instantly, where that doesn't really happen. Um, I like to do preventative. So if you know your genes, we can prevent diseases. Uh, but, uh, you know, we just don't, we don't want to do that. It's too, it takes too much work for us to do that today. Okay. If, if a person is having some problems, and you're talking about genetics, how would they go about finding out if this, the problem that they're dealing with is a genetic issue? Well, it's very easy. They can get, get a genetic screening. Um, there are some physicians that are offering this more all the time. But I like a basic genetic screening first to know then how we need to hone that down. Uh, the basic genetic screenings are not as much. Um, but if you have specific problems, we hone it to the specifics of that gene problem. So could they go to their own physician or do they have to go to someone that is, specializes in this genetic to be able to find that answer? Well, you really need to go somebody specialized, somebody who specializes in uh, interpreting genes correctly. There's a lot of people out there who just hang it on their shingle, they didn't do any training, and they're just doing it, and they're doing it incorrectly, and they're doing a disservice to the American population. Well, let's go back to the book again. Uh, <laughs> why, why was God so directive as it related to diet for Israel and, and the whole idea of the proper uh, nutrients in that of our body. What, why was that significant, you think, to God, that he would put all of those kinds of directives, especially in for Israel and, and for his people, the Jews? Well, I think part of it was their genetic makeup, but part of it was for cleanliness, because especially back then, there were certain foods were not as clean as they are today. 
but uh, the foods really direct, and part of it is how you break down those foods. So there are certain foods that help you feed your, the right bacteria in your bowel. We have something called the human biome. So we have bacteria that is living within us, probably more than we have our own cells living within us. And this bacteria needs to feed properly, and we need the correct amounts of those bacteria. Well, certain foods feed that, like coconut meat feeds a certain type of bacteria and also cleanses and is an antibiotic for other type of viruses and bacteria, things that we're exposed to. So when you eat according to the scripture, you keep your body healthy, you prevent disease, and you can be extremely uh, well. I, I think it's, uh, it's interesting when we talk about living in a fallen world and we talk about that often as Christians, we tend to just think about that in terms of our spiritual application. But sin has affected the human life, has it not? Yes, it has. And how would you say that it has affected us mostly? Well, you know, it affects us at the very cellular level. So, um, Really? Yes. At the cellular level? Sin affects us at the cellular level because every, you know, he spoke everything into his existence. That's correct. So speaking causes a vibration in the cell. And that vibration causes either health or death. Sin causes a bad vibration in our body. And that vibration will lead to disease. So that's why we're fallen. That's why we, become, we can be, succumb to illnesses and disease. Not necessarily because we're sinning so terrible and we're worse than anybody next to us. But sin can lead you open to that. There's sin all around us. And that affects the vibration of our cells and our organ systems. And there's a harmony. Our body's like a symphony. So you have your cardiovascular system, and it has a certain vibration at a certain level. You have your GI system has a vibration at a certain level. They all are like a symphony. And uh, you can probably hear that sound. And they've actually done some studies, and they've actually been able to quantify the sound and the vibration of every organ system in our body. Wow. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of things before, and I've talked to a lot of people, but that's my first. I think I've heard briefly, but that is great explanation. And for those of you that are watching, we're not talking about something weird or, or, or different or strange. This is God's Word, and as a person that has spent your life in study and preparation, you're here to help us in the process. If a person were to be watching right now and say, okay, um, Dr. Crozier, I, uh, I want to get well. I want to get better. How, I, but I don't know where to start. How would you explain where to start for a person to sort of change their life cycle? Because a lot of people just become, it's like New Year's. We all going to join a health club thinking that's going to change our life, right? Yeah, right. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, just makes the health clubs richer. What would you advise them, a person that says, you know what, I've all of a sudden felt like I need to think about this. Mm -hmm. What would I do? I say, well, number one, I tell everybody. Uh, my sick patients as well. I was just on the phone this morning with a patient, and I, and, I, and I sat there and I told her, you have to believe you're going to be well. If you don't believe, you will never be well. So I gave her specific instructions. Number one, and this is what I tell every one of my patients, number one, you get the word of God out. And you, if you have a sickness, you lay out those healing scriptures. Whatever you're struggling with, you lay out those scriptures. You quote them while you're looking at yourself in the eye. If you cannot look yourself at the eye in the mirror and quote that scripture, you don't believe it's for you. So number one, you have to believe it's for you. And so that's my number one step. Okay. And then number two is change your diet. We can change our diet, everyone. We can all take steps in changing our diet. Okay, so let's look at that. So if let's look at my diet or your a diet. What would you say is significant in the diet and needs to be removed from a diet that would help people to begin to take the kinds of baby steps to move forward? Well, number one is uh, hormones in our meats. Okay. That's probably number one because the hormones are causing uh, girls to have puberty at much younger ages, which puts them at risk for breast cancer later on. Hormones in the meat are putting risk, risk for breast cancer in women worldwide. Breast cancer in men, it's 1%. It's going up. It's almost up to 2% now in men, breast cancer. Prostate cancer in men. These are all hormones in our meats. So that's number one is the hormones in our meat. 
Okay. So with free range, is that what free range means? Free range uh, usually is, or is non, free. Uh, yeah. Okay, and, and it talks about that they're non-hormonal. Uh, right, non-hormone. Okay, okay. Uh, keep going. Let's talk about, uh, how about um, French fries and, and starches? And I mean, <laughs> again, I, I'm just being honest, because, you know, most people, they come to Orlando, and it's, it's vacation time, and we're going to, we're, we're going to enjoy. But when we get back to life and in, in, in really responsibility, what are the things that I should be taking that are good for me and eliminate? Just sort of help us get that real well, quick. I like to el eliminate all the fried foods, okay. everything fried, because it has bad oils. We want to inundate our body because your cell has a bilipid layer. It's phosphatidylcholine. And you want your cells to be inundated with the proper lipids. So you want things that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. You want like avocados. You want to eat avocados. You want to eat uh, olive oils and coconut oils. And those kind of oils are the correct oils for our body. That's what they ate in the Bible times. They ate those things. Okay. And that's why they lived and, uh, and, and prospered in that process. Um, this is fascinating because, I, again... I don't think that Christians spend enough time thinking about the significance of their, their personal body and their, their decisions that they're making that are influencing us. And I, I think I've met as a pastor through the years a lot of people that have complained about their health and they come to the altar for healing mm -hmm. when in fact it's not that God hasn't or won't, it's that God does place responsibility in our hands to care for ourselves as well. Would you agree with that? I agree with that. I think, you know, our body's the temple of the Holy Spirit, but we are directed to take control of our bodies. You know, that was mandated in, in Genesis, right. that we were to take dominion over the things around us. That's including our body. We have to take control and eat correctly. And so what would be just, we've got to take a break in just about a minute, but before we take that break, so what is the biggest thing that a person is going to have to do to take that control that you find they struggle with in life? When people come to you and say, I got a problem and I need to change, what is that, that, that one issue that they always sort of use as the excuse? I need a, a free day. I need something sweet. I have to, I have a sweet tooth. I can't help it, I have a sweet tooth. Well, genetically, they could have a sweet tooth, but there's other ways to overcome that. And as you eat less sweets, you will desire them less. Okay, so we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, uh, I'm gonna ask you, what does that look like, okay? Those sweets that we can eat, because I, I declare prophetically I have a sweet tooth, okay? You gotta help me, doctor. We are so delighted that you've taken time to join us on Joy in Our Town. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Crozier, who is a, a physician, and he's talking about our health. We're going to take a 30-second break. I want you to stay right there. When you come back, we're going to keep talking about how Dr. Crozier is going to, he's going to analyze my sweet tooth and help me to be a better person. But you stay there. We'll be right back. <coughs> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. It is a delight to have you with us today. And Dr. Crozier, thank you for joining us. When we took a break just a few moments ago, I told you I had a sweet tooth and you said I needed to eat less sweets. I'm just going to tell you, honestly, that's tough. What would I eat to get rid of my sweet tooth? Well, you can still eat some sweets, but you can maybe change them. Maybe do uh, maple syrup and things. So every fall, I make apple dumplings with my girls. Okay. But we figured out how we could make apple dumplings and make them healthy. So we got gluten-free flour, we, uh, so gluten-free dough around the apple. The, uh, with the sugar and the sweetness, we used yukon syrup, which oh, yeah. is, a, yeah. which is sure. sweet, yes. but it's still a healthy sweetness, and it actually helps feed the proper bacteria sure. in your gut. Okay. So there's other things you can do. To, you can offset 
that, that sweetness for it. So you can still eat some sweet things, maybe some berries, maybe some apples, things like that to get your sweet tooth. Beautiful. Whew. I'm glad. I thought you were going to just wean me off of it, <laughs> and I couldn't handle that. Um, you, you are a licensed OBGYN. You've delivered, uh, I'm sure, hundreds, maybe even thousands of babies in your career. Uh, women's issues. Uh, we, many of our viewers are women. What is the number one health issue that women face today? The number one health issue is cardiovascular. Everybody thinks it's something else, but it's actually more women die of heart disease than of anything else. More than men? They actually have passed up men now, yes. And, and so, why, what, genetically, why would that, that women would have that problem more than any other issue? Well, I think it's multifactorial, but there's genetics that can play a role in that. Okay. There's people with a, something called the APOE, uh, the APOA, the APOB. These are genes that actually dictate how your cholesterol is and, and the risk for you developing atherosclerosis atherosclerosis, that is hardening or right. for plaque formation in our vessels. And so there's genetic glitches with that. And um, so if they have that, then I actually put them on a special diet. Wow. Uh, so is there, are there signs or signals that a woman has or moving toward this kind of problem or do they just have to go in and be, and be evaluated on a yearly basis for that? They really need to be evaluated on a yearly basis because it can sneak up on them just suddenly. But many of those women know their, their risk factors ahead of time. They know they have uh, cholesterol issues, okay. triglyceride issues, all those things. The triglycerides usually come from our sugars, from our carbohydrates. And a lot of women will have high triglycerides from their carbohydrates and sugars and that they'll ha end up with vascular disease because of that. Women don't have a lot of signs up front, but they can have some signs of maybe some indigestion, maybe jaw pain. Uh, some of those things are can be some early signs of uh, cardiac disease. Good. Uh, I think it's important that women then would make sure, like anyone, that they get a yearly checkup. I think a lot of people, my wife doesn't like that. She, she just sort of feels like I'm healthy and I don't have any issues. Uh, but you do encourage people then to have that wellness checkup every year yes. by, by their physician in the process. What is the most common cancer a woman deals with then in her life? It, since we're dealing with, with the ladies' issues here, that's your specialty. Uh, what is the, the, the greatest form of cancer for a woman? The greatest form is breast cancer. The number one cause of death for women is actually in cancer is actually still lung cancer believe it or not still lung cancer i know that our smoking rates have gone down in the united states but unfortunately we have many other things we have pollutants and other th other things increasing uh, our risk for uh, lung cancer in other ways so that is the number one cause of death but breast cancer is the number one cancer in women okay. And so, again, would it be genetics? Would they need to know what their genetic history is as it relates to knowing if they're in a risk factor? Right. About 10% of women can have a BRCA1, BRCA2 gene factor, and those are, are genes that can be tested. Your regular OBGYNs test for that all the time. I tested for it for years now. Um, but th that is one thing that can be tested in women that could help offset that. And then if they have a family risk, do they have a family risk? So, and then being overweight. Oh, being overweight increases your risk for breast cancer by tenfold. Re say that again. Being overweight Ooh. in a woman will increase her risk for breast cancer by tenfold. Wow, wow. So, um, another part of that then is sort of evaluating where I'm at in life, and I better be serious about that. I think... Uh, I really believe that when we stand before God, and this book talks to us that we're going to stand before God, we're going to give account. If we give account of all of our words, as Jesus said, we are going to have to give account of the way we've, we've lived our lives and, and treated our, our, our bodies in the midst of that. Um, so what you're challenging both men and women today is, is to take a serious look. Um, again, I, for those that may have joined us, what stops people from wanting to take serious looks at their health? Uh, sometimes it's fear, uh, and, and, and I've seen that in a lot of people. 
They, they are afraid of what they're going to find out. I know that from, from my brother. He, he didn't, would not go for a long time. And he just did not want to know if he had a problem with his heart or a problem, you know, and he ended up with multifactorial problems because he just neglected to go. And so, and I see that with a lot of people. Now, that happens more in men than women. Women are usually a little bit more proactive for their health. However, as women are getting out in society, they are taking more of a man's role on. They're busy with, uh, uh, in work, in the workforce, they're becoming stressed. That stress actually is going to put them at risk for heart disease, other problems. And uh, so that all, all unfolds. Now they are not taking it as important, uh, their role uh, in, in being proactive in their health. Okay. We're, we're talking to families and uh, people that are watching. So um, I've got three grandchildren and, um, you know, I've just raised my, my family, but now I've got them in my life. If we wanted to become healthy as a family, what would you say we would, how would our conversation around the dinner table talk about changing our priorities and the way we're going to go about and, and doing it in a way that doesn't make it sound like I'm being punished, but I'm really beginning to move my family or, or the conversation in areas that we need to have because you know, we've got all different body types. I'm a big guy. I've, I've struggled with weight all my life. Uh, I, we, have, we have those issues. How would you advise me to talk with my family or our viewers to talk with their family about making some changes? Well, you know, we have six children. I have one grandchild. Okay. So I'm not quite up to you. Okay. But we, what we do is we still make sure we sit down and have a dinner together. How many people still do that? Wow. Very few families in America are still sitting down and taking that time together. That's a time to spend to develop your family unit. Okay. You can still have the foods that you had before. You just need to change how you make them. Okay. So you can still enjoy some of those same foods. Just change how you're making those foods. Eat organic meats, things that are hormone-free. Make sure that they're organic vegetables, but still just to try to incorporate a little bit more vegetable. You know, your, your drinks, make sure that they're more water-based, uh, things that are not carbohydrated, or they're bad for you. You know, so that's the things that we kind of change kind of gradually with our kids. Good. And I guess as parents, you, uh, as, as my father would say to me that, uh, son, if you like uh, clean sheets and a bed, uh, you'll sit at our, and like sitting at our table, you're going to follow our directives. So parents do have a sense of directive that they can give. Yes, they do. This. Um, we're, we're, sadly, we're going to have to come to the end of our discussion. Um, as a physician, I, I'm sure you hear lots of things from lots of people about issues in life. And I, I'd like for you to take, because I know that you're a man of faith and you believe that this book, it's what I appreciate about TBN. They've always been word driven and, and, and encouraging our hearts. Yes. Um, as a physician, would you just take a few moments to talk to our viewers just about the significance of this book and, and their health and life and how they can walk better yes and live a better life than maybe they're living right now right well you know the word of god is so important in our lives it gives us so many insights into how we should live what we should do how we should eat uh, how we should live our life you know there's a lot that we can do as a family as a husband and a wife you know the song of solomon read through that song of solomon with your your wife you know, enjoy your relationship with your spouse because that releases endorphins in your life and it helps build you up. Um, but there's many things in the Word of God and there are many healing scriptures. And so uh, I would like to pray for you and I would like to pray for those who are sick today. Uh, I pray for my patients on a daily basis uh, because I believe prayer is essential in everyone's life. And uh, He hears us. And uh, so, Lord Jesus, we thank you. I thank you for every viewer there today. I thank you that you have created them with their own special DNA. You know them. You know them at the cellular level. And I'm asking, living God and Father, for those who are suffering from fibromyalgia, 
from many of the other diseases that are affecting many of these women today, I'm asking, living God and Father, that you come in, that you bring healing and health to every cell in their body. Your word says that by your stripes we are healed, and we claim that in your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. I wish I would have found you a long time ago to uh, treat me in the process, but uh, it, what a delight to just be encouraged, uh, Doctor. I, so many times when we talk to physicians, we always hear the bad news, but I've, I've been encouraged today, and I trust that you have felt the same way. We've got just uh, another moment of time before we, we have to step away from them and we will hope that you'll come back and join us on Joy in Our Town because that's what these programs are about, uh, Doctor, yes. in that process. Um, if, if a person is, at this very moment, if they are distressed and they need some kind of medical support, what would you encourage, how would you encourage a person to find someone like yourself? Well, number one, um, does your physician spend time with you? Okay. They need to listen to you. Does your physician listen to you and what your needs are? Good. So if you have a physician that is not listening to you, then I would encourage you to make sure that uh, either you ask them to take more time or that you find a new physician. Because again, it is your life, it is your resource, and it is your decision in that process. And I really agree with uh, Dr. Crozier that God has placed this responsibility upon our lives. And it is our prayer here at TBN that you live a life that is to its fullest potential. That you live in a way that you're going to be not just active, but that you're going to be effective with your life, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, that God wants his very best for you. And that's why Dr. Crozier has taken time to pray for you. That's the reason why TBN has placed joy in our town and dedicated 30 minutes to help you look at your responsibility of good health. Dr. Crozier, I thank you so very much for being with us. I hope they invite you back. I don't even think we began to scratch the surface with you, and uh, there's so many things that I wish I had more time to ask you personally, but thank you. May God bless you, your family, and your practice. Thanks for joining us today on Joy in Our Town. We hope that you'll join us again next week where we're going to have another episode of talking to you about God's goodness and God's blessings. Until next time, bye for now. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.